Hello, welcome back to Fred in the shed back in the shed now since i did the little video on the skip that was coming in to the uk mainly on the 6900 there quite a few of you picked up on my little bit of qrm interference this really horrible crackling noise that you can hear that comes through um on my radios right across pretty much all of the 11 meter band and a few of you sort of picked up on it and I think you've quite correctly diagnosed it as PLT interference which is the bane of any home base station nowadays um, what I mean by PLT interference is that it's probably interference caused by someone's ring main in their house it's not mine and normally nowadays a lot of people like to extend their Wi-Fi range by using Wi-Fi extenders that they plug into their ring mains their house mains and this creates interference radio interference right across the spectrum typically from anything from 2 to up to 32 megahertz and it produces this horrible crackling kind of frying bacon sound that you hear and yeah it's not in my house I won't have those devices in my house but obviously a neighbor is using one of these extenders and yeah it's been causing a problem for a number of years now and yeah i could as people said if i could go around and persuade them not to use them but i, I want to kind of keep a low profile i don't really want to put myself on the radar literally the fact that i have the antenna up and uh, i don't want a kind of a reaction that people might then complain about the antenna so it is a bit of a problem um, i have tried to eliminate it in using ferrites and all sorts of things and over the years I've given up. It's really annoying because it affects the 27 triple five, the triple nickel. But I thought what I'd do in this video is I will uh, I will show you this PLT effect on three different radios: the 6900, the 9900, and then on the HF side we use the DX, the Elinco DX SR8, and it affects each radio to a different degree. Uh, as, as the price goes up on the radios it, it helps cope with the sound sort of better but I thought I'd do a demo just to show you I know a lot of you will, will be su will suffer from this and this is why a lot of people choose to go mobile totally get that but uh, anyway let's start with the 6900 <laughs> So as you can hear, it's very prominent here on the 6900. It's a shame because when you've got Skip coming in like today, when these stations calling CQ, and also me with my hearing loss issues when I really need it clear, it is quite bad. Now the radio does have a noise blanker, but I'll be honest, it doesn't seem to do a lot. I'll switch that on and off. That's the noise blanker off. And that's the noise blanker on and to my ears it, it doesn't do anything at all so yeah the 6900 is a good radio 150 pound radio but it does suffer with its plt quite badly So moving across to the CRT 9900 and again this has a noise blanker that I've switched on it's menu based so it's not so easy to switch on and off and this again suffers from the same type of PLT interference although it does seem to cope with it a little better there in the background but when you've got stations coming in they do sort of wipe it out and go over the top but as you can hear it's definitely still there now moving up to the HF radio which of course costs three to new costs three times the cost of the 9900 you still find that PLT interference is still there and it's probably no 
better than it was on the 9900. It's improved from the 6900, but it is still definitely there. However, what the SR8 has is it has a much more effective noise blanker that you can turn on, which certainly really does help, and it's in, this, in, this improves the receive far greater than the other two radios. And I'll try and demonstrate that here. There you go. I'll turn it off again. Right, I've, I've just come up slightly up on the frequency because uh, the 555, there's a lot of skip coming in. So here we are, 27.8 uh, megs here, and there's that PLT noise. It's there, it's annoying, so I'm just going to put on the noise filter now. completely removed it, I'll just do it again and turn it off. There's the PLT noise. And I'll turn it back on again. And the noise blanker. Yeah, it's pretty much eradicated it. In most circumstances, unless it's really, really bad, it, it will completely turn it off. As someone suggested in the comments, you, you can turn the antennator down or just the RF receive on the, the RF gain there on the, on the 69 and also the 9900. You can reduce it down, it, it does help a little bit, but that PLT noise is still going to be there. An X phase, I bought an X phase eliminator to try and remove this from the shed. Uh, I haven't had a great deal of success because they said that you could just run a wire just around the shed to remove interference but I haven't found that worked and I need to look into that maybe erecting a second vertical antenna. What does this video prove then? Well it comes down to cost doesn't it really like, like most things in life. The 6900N is a great starting radio it's very difficult to fault as, as I've said before but that did so, that does seem to suffer the worst for noise, uh, certainly it's PLT noise. The 9900, it's a little bit better, it still suffers from noise, it's noise blanker won't eliminate it. Um, yeah, and the Alinco, the DXSRA, that suffers from the same amount of noise as the 9900, but of course when you switch on a noise blanker, a better filtration, it pretty much eradicates it, it sorts it out. But you do expect that, you know, 150 pound radio, 200 pound radio brand new 600 pound radio i think you can get it a little bit cheaper if you shop around but they are 600 pound in radio world it's a lot of money in it just for something you're going to use on 11 meters if you haven't got your ticket of course if you move on to your ticket then you've got the radio and i have to point out that none of these radios are type approved to use on cb frequencies in the uk again that's something you have to sort of take in mind second hand wise though you can pick these up obviously a lot cheaper than 600 pounds uh, typically I think I haven't checked recently but a start around about sort of 300 pounds to about 450 if you want one nicely in a box and all the instructions so it sort of starts to make sense if you you know I know it's expensive but if you're willing to spend that a little bit extra and you're certainly certainly if you're sort of struggling with sort of noise or you've got hearing issues like me then it might be worth spending that little bit extra to get a used HF radio. I know people don't like it when I say that, but it might help you to get a used to get a used HF radio. Then if you want to move up to do your ham ticket, then you've got the equipment. But like I say, none of these radios are type approved here in the UK. You have to sort of bear that in mind. So okay, I just thought I'd sort of show you that. Three different radios trying to deal with interference, the bane of home base setups unfortunately. And uh, yeah, that's it. So as always, there's the old thumb. Cheers, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your time, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, stay safe. And of course, I will catch you all on the next one. Take care. <laughs>
Oh, oh.